Hello, and welcome to my presentation on 3D printing wings with Morphing Trailing Edge Technology. My name is Ben Moulton. The purpose of this presentation is to motivate fused deposition modeling, also known as 3D printing, as a viable manufacturing method for morphing RC aircraft. This is done by presenting a morphing aircraft, a morphing flying wing aircraft, a capable of yaw control. This de fused deposition modeling has several benefits. First, with 3D printing, it is repeatable, meaning I could take the part files, print out a part, and repeat the print several times with the same exact quality and dimensions. Secondly, I could take those parts files and put them in another printer with the same print settings and replicate the part. Thirdly, 3D printing is very quick and requires minimal upkeep and man hours during assembly. Fourth, 3D printing is extremely cheap. The materials generally running 20 to $30 a kilogram. And lastly, 3D printing parts, 3D printed parts are relatively durable in the realm of RC aircraft. Before we discuss these morphing wings, however, first we must discuss two types of flaps. The first is an articulated flap, which has a single articulation at the hinge point, after which the deflection is constant along the aft portion of the airfoil. The second is a parabolic flap in which the camber line conforms to a parabolic profile shown here, aft of this hinge point. Noted here, the camber line slope of the articulated flap when deflected is discontinuous. And shown here, the, the camber line slope of the parabolic flap is continuous, is first order continuous. Notice that this discontinuity is not beneficial. This discontinuity increase causes an adverse pressure gradient increasing the pressure drag on this airfoil when deflected. On the right is shown the ideal flap effectiveness compared between these two flaps. The first flap, the articulated flap, increases up to about 1 and the parabolic flap increases up to around 1.4. Thus, for every flap cord fraction, the parabolic flap is more effective than the articulated flap. Due to the decrease in drag and increased flap effectiveness of the parabolic flap, we designed our morphing airfoils with the parabolic flap in mind. The first morphing airfoil design we present today is the Airfoil Recambering Compliance System, or ARCS design. This design can be 3D printed out of two materials, is 3D printed out of two materials. The first, polylactic acid, or PLA, is a stiff filament. The second, thermoplastic polyurethane, or TPU, is, a, is an elastic flexible filament. Outlined in black on this figure is what would be 3D printed out of PLA, and outlined in green is what would be 3D printed out of TPU. Outlined in blue is what would be 3D printed in TPU and PLA layered spanwise, which we'll discuss later. This design is actuated via a servo actuator located inside of the leading edge, controlling the tongue via a control rod. This tongue is slid back and forth inside of the uh, slip joint. This allows the morphing airfoil to deflect. Um, this design has several benefits, the first being that the can camber line conforms to a parabolic profile. Des the design is also extremely simple to 3D print, and to CAD model and 3D print. This design is also lightweight when decreasing the infill on this leading edge portion of the airfoil. The second design we present here is the Kinetic Internal Nexus Compliance System, or Kinks design. This design is fully printed out of PLA and actuates similarly to the ARCS design with an actuator located inside the leading edge actuating this tongue via a control rod. Pulling this tongue in and out of this slip joint allows for the morphing airfoil to deflect. This airfoil also conforms the camber line to a parabolic profile. This design is simple and lightweight when decreasing this in the infill on the leading edge portion of the wing and has the added benefit of being 3D printed out of a single material. Now with these two designs in mind, two types of control surfaces best exemplify the most important attributes of the ARCS and Kinks design respectively. The first is a continuous control surface, which has a continuous trailing edge along the aft of the portion of the wing. The second are discrete control surfaces in which the wing is discretized into distinct sections each of which is able to deflect independent of its neighbors. 
the continuous control surface best utilizes the benefits of the arcs design, and the discrete control surface best utilizes the benefits of the kinks design. A study performed by the USU Aero Lab to be published in the future um, examined the yaw authority compared between these two aircraft, or excuse me, these two control surfaces. It noticed that the discrete control surfaces had greater yaw authority than the continuous control surfaces. This is because of these distinct um, gaps along the trailing edge. These distinct changes in the trailing edge cause distinct gradients in the section lift. This causes increased induced drag at the same comparable locations as the continuous control surfaces. This increase in induced drag improved the yaw control via the moment, the, as these two had the same moment arm, with the increased drag, they were able to have increased yaw authority. For this reason, for our morphing flying wing aircraft, we designed with discrete we continued to design with discrete control surfaces using the kinks mechanism. Now some lessons we learned along the way um, when 3D printing are given here. The first is that when printing a bimaterial print as with this arcs print shown here, you, first of all, you have to print with two materials, one extruder printing PLA and one extruder printing TPU. Um, when printing with two materials, it worked best to print them with a temperature dim difference that was minimized, meaning that we, decreased, we increased the PLA temperature and decreased the TPU temperature so that they were as close as possible to improve the layer adhesion between the TPU and PLA. A second thing we noticed was that when using, we, we preferred to use lighter color filaments as they had a higher glass transition temperature which improved the versatility of the aircraft for all temperature, weather temperature conditions. A third thing we noticed was that when printing, we preferred a skin thickness of about 0.8 millimeters. This allowed for the structure to take aerodynamic loadings, but also to be able to morph the flap effectively. Shown here is the parabolic deflection on the arcs design above and the kinks design below. They are, they are both shown to deflect plus or minus 15 degrees here. Shown here is the, on the left, is the continuous control surface using the arcs design. You'll note that the trailing edge is continuous along the aft portion of the wing. And on the right is shown the, the, the discrete flaps using the kinks design. This is on the horizon airframe design. As shown here, they are able to deflect sufficient for controllability. But as mentioned previously, we decided to design with, to use our design of the discrete flaps with the kinks mechanisms because they provided greater yaw control. Shown here is the final kinks design with an I-beam added for structural support. Also shown in blue is the servo, is the location of where the servo mechanism is best located to actuate this morphing aft portion of the wing. Shown below is the horizon airframe, the airframe used, the flying wing airframe used to represent um, this yaw controllability. You will notice that the control surfaces are cosine clustered along the wing. For more information about the design of this morphing airframe, please visit the following presentation by Snow and Hunsaker in SciTech 2020 in the SciTech 2021 forum. Shown here is a picture of the horizon airframe with these flaps defected, and on the right is shown the deflection that we're able to achieve with these flaps. You will notice several tests done on each section. A buffer section had to be removed on the tip of each section in order to allow for control surfaces not to bind. This caused the deflection to be about plus or minus 25 degrees. In conclusion, we present the following two designs, the arcs design used with continuous control surfaces and the kinks design used with discrete control surfaces, both viable solutions for 3D printing morphing RC aircraft. For more information, please see our paper. For more information on the arcs and kinks designs as well as the Horizon CAD models, please visit aerolab.usu.edu. Thank you.